and Brother Anthony Roberts greeting you from the five Gospel Halls here in Tobago. We are delighted that you've been able to join us for today's program, Moments with Truth. We are praying that as you view this program, that you will receive a blessing from the Lord. For those who are not saved, we are praying very specially that you will receive the Lord Jesus as your Savior, even today, as you hear the Word of God. And for those of you who are saved, it is our prayer that you will be built up on your most holy faith as you view the Word of God. A pleasant good day, a pleasant good morning to everyone in this island, in this country, and everyone who is viewing this broadcast, Moment, Moments with Truth, on the World Wide Web. We greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's a joy, it's a privilege, it's an honor to come into your homes with the sweet message of the gospel, letting you know or reminding you what the Word of God says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Before we open the Word of God and tell you more of that one who loves us with an everlasting love, shall we seek the Lord's face in prayer. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father and our God, we approach thee in the name of thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and we thank thee, we worship thee, we adore thee for whom thou art in thyself. Thou hast made it known in thy word that thou art the God who is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to a knowledge of the truth and be saved. So we pray as we shall open the word of God and as we read the scriptures of truth and speak of that one who is altogether lovely, thou wilt grant unto us grace and help of which we stand in need, that thy word will be declared very simply, yet with power, that everyone who listens, everyone who views our Father in heaven, our heart's desire and prayer, and prayer is that each person is going to receive a blessing, especially those who are not saved, they'll be blessed with thy free, perfect, and eternal salvation. Glorify thy wonderful name, refresh the bowels of thy people, and again we pray for those who are not well in their bodies, that it will heal and restore to a measure of good health and strength. We commit ourselves to thee, we ask for thy help, we ask for thy blessing through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today I would like us to turn please to the gospel according to Luke. Luke's gospel chapter 19 we begin at verse 1. The gospel according to Luke chapter 19, and we begin at verse number 1. The word of God says, And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, who was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not because of the crowd, for he was little of stature. And he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, this day is salvation come to this house, for as much as he also is the son of Abraham. For the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. We trust and we know that the Lord will bless the public reading of his word to our hearts and help us in declaring same for Christ's sake. Amen. Today I would like us to consider as our subject a great change a great change sometimes we sing with the scholars in sunday school and sometimes it is sung outside of sunday school the songwriter says a great change 
since I was born. There's a great change since I was born. A great change since I was born. There's a great, great change since I was born. When we consider the life of that man who comes before us, Zacchaeus, we cannot help but think, we cannot help but lift our hearts to God in thanking God for what the Lord Jesus Christ did in the life of this man, Zacchaeus. A great change since I was born. If it were written in the days of Zacchaeus, he would have sung it continually. A great change since I was born. There are some things I would like to consider. I would like us to consider as we contemplate, as we muse, as we meditate upon this tremendous, momentous change that occurred in the life of this man, Zacchaeus. The first thing I would like us to consider is the man's plight, Zacchaeus's plight, Zacchaeus's state, Zacchaeus's condition. The word of God makes it very clear that Zacchaeus, the Bible tells us, he was the chief among the publicans and he was rich. The publicans were not loved by many people because they were using their office and they were using their profession to do those things that were contrary to the mind and will of God. In other words, they were overcharging the people when they came to pay taxes and the extra money goes into the pockets of those publicans. The consequence of that was they were not loved by many people. And so Zacchaeus was the chief. Zacchaeus was the head. Zacchaeus was over every publican. And the Bible tells us Zacchaeus was rich. So when we consider the plight of this man, Zacchaeus, although Zacchaeus was rich, notice that this man, Zacchaeus, was dissatisfied. Zacchaeus was not satisfied with his wealth. In other words, Zacchaeus' riches, Zacchaeus' wealth did not bring satisfaction. The job and profession of Zacchaeus did not bring him satisfaction. And Zacchaeus was a dissatisfied man. Are we speaking to someone this morning? Maybe we are speaking to many people in this island. Maybe we are speaking to many people in the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Maybe we are speaking to many in the Caribbean. Maybe we are speaking to those on the World Wide Web. And you are not satisfied. You have tried many things. You have tried many, many, many things. And neither of those things has brought satisfaction to you. And so this songwriter said, I've tried the broken cisterns, Lord, and ah, the waters failed. Even as I stooped to drink, they fled and mocked me as I wailed. The songwriter went on to say, Now none but Christ can satisfy, none other name for me. There is love, there is life, there is lasting joy, Lord Jesus found in thee. Dear friends, this morning, viewing this broadcast, Moments with Truth, we want to tell you from the word of God that satisfaction comes when a man, when a woman, when a boy or girl repents of his sin and turns to God through Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses that person and Jesus, and Jesus only satisfies the longing of that person's heart. Zacchaeus was dissatisfied although he was rich Although Zacchaeus had influence, although Zacchaeus had a good job, the man was not satisfied. Dear friends, again, we want to say to you from the authority of the word of God, satisfaction does not come from riches. Satisfaction does not come from popularity. Satisfaction does not come through religion. Satisfaction does not come through any form of evil or sin. Sin, satisfaction comes when a man is born again when there is a change internal change then and only then 
satisfaction comes to the individual. We ask you this question. Are you satisfied? Are you satisfied? Has, has your profession brought satisfaction to you? Have your riches brought satisfaction to you? If you are honest, you will have to conclude and agree that neither of them has brought satisfaction to you. So Zacchaeus, the first thing that comes to us when we look at his plight, when you look at his state, the man was dissatisfied. And so the word of God tells us of a woman. The word of God tells of many people. Nicodemus tried religion and he was not satisfied. The woman at the well, she tried immorality and it did not bring satisfaction. Dear friends, you want to tell you, whatever you have tried, the things have not brought satisfaction. But as we speak to you this morning, as we speak to you today, if you repent of your sin and trust Jesus Christ as your savior, satisfaction will be yours. Secondly, not only the plight of the man, not only did the plight bring this satisfaction, but notice that the man was not only dissatisfied, the man was disconsolate. Zacchaeus was disconsolate. Zacchaeus was unhappy. Zacchaeus was cast down. Zacchaeus' riches did not bring happiness. Zacchaeus' riches did not bring joy. Zacchaeus' Zacchaeus' riches did not bring pleasure. It did not bring satisfaction. And the man was very sorrowful. The man was unhappy. Dear friends, viewing this broadcast, Moments with Truth, these things do not bring happiness. The songwriter says, and sometimes we sing with the children in the Sunday school, happiness is to know the Savior living my life within his favor having a change in my behavior happiness is the lord real joy is mine don't matter if teardrops fall i have found the secret is jesus in my heart happiness is a new creation happiness is to know the Lord. Friends, if you need joy, real joy, wonderful joy, we beseech you in the name of Jesus, let Jesus come into your heart. Zacchaeus was dissatisfied. Zacchaeus was disconsolate, not happy. And happiness, we said, is to know the Savior. But notice something else. Look at Zacchaeus' discovery. What did Zacchaeus discover? What did Zacchaeus find out? Zacchaeus found out that those things do not bring happiness, do not bring joy. And the Bible tells us in verse number three, and he sought to see Jesus. This man Zacchaeus discovered that satisfaction, Zacchaeus recognized, he discovered that joy comes from the Savior. You notice what the Bible said? He sought to see Jesus. He sought to see the Savior. Friends, we want to tell you that it is Jesus and Jesus only, the Savior who satisfies, who saves, who keeps, who satisfies. He he is the one who brings joy, real joy, wonderful joy into your hearts, into your homes, into your family. It is Jesus and Jesus only. The man's discovery, he discovered that those things could not satisfy. Notice also the man's desire. He sought to see Jesus. There was a desire in Zacchaeus' heart. There was a longing in Zacchaeus' heart to see the Savior. Friends, we ask you this question. Is there a desire in your soul to be saved? Is there a longing in your heart to be born again? Is there a longing in your soul to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior? Zacchaeus discovered he was a sinner. Zacchaeus discovered that Jesus Christ was the only Savior. He recognized that it's only one who can forgive him. There is only one who can bring that great change in his heart. And his wonderful name is Jesus. And we say to you this day that it is Jesus only who changes, who cleanses, who saves and gives the sinner peace.
peace with God. So the Bible tells us this man Zacchaeus, his plight. This man Zacchaeus, he was dissatisfied. This man Zacchaeus was disconsolate. This man Zacchaeus made a discovery. This man Zacchaeus had a desire. His desire was to see Jesus. He wanted to see him who he was. Dear friends, we want to tell you a little bit about Jesus Christ, who he is. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the one who was, the one who is, the one who is to come. He is the great I am. He is God manifest in flesh. He is the spotless Lamb of God. And He is the only Savior. The Lord Jesus Christ said in John's Gospel, chapter 14 and verse 6, He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He is the only Savior. Zacchaeus wanted to see who he was. But notice secondly, the Lord's passage the passage of the Lord Jesus Christ, the journey, the voyage of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ knew all about Zacchaeus. Jesus Christ knew long before Zacchaeus was born that Zacchaeus will be there and there would be a longing in Zacchaeus's heart to see who he was, to see who he is. And so Jesus, the Bible tells us, he entered into Jericho and Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. The passage, the journey, the voyage of the Lord Jesus Christ Dear friends, while we were in that condition, when man sinned against God, and because of sin, sin brought dissatisfaction, and we have been disconsolate, we have been without joy, we have been very unhappy in that awful condition. God did not leave us there to die and go to hell, but the Bible tells us the Word was with God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God and the world was made flesh and tabernacle among us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth god came down god became man tabernacle among us lived perfectly he lived a life of absolute perfection and beauty he lived a life without sin without spot without blemish Jesus Christ could not have sinned, the spotless Lamb of God. He moved among sinners and never sinned and could not have sinned, the spotless Lamb of God. But friends, this morning, we thank God for his passage. He came into this world. The Lord Jesus Christ lived a life of perfection, absolute perfection. And then the Lord Jesus Christ, in order to give us that change, in order for a great change to come in our lives, in our hearts. Jesus Christ went to Calvary. He suffered at the hands of men. He suffered at the hands of the devil. He suffered at the hands of demons. And friends, we want to tell you that when men did all that they could have done, they spat in his face and they said, away with him. We will not have this man to reign over us. God the Father took his beloved son and as it were, he placed him into the oven and the hand of God was on the thermostat as it were and he turned this thermostat to its maximum heat absolute judgment and wrath all the billows and wrath of the eternal God the Father was poured out upon Jesus and when the door was closed in the oven as it were jesus christ cried out my god my god why hast thou forsaken me jesus christ in order for that change to come in my life and in your life he suffered he bled he died they took him down they placed him in that borrowed tomb but this morning today we lift our hearts to god and thank god that the grave is empty the tomb is empty jesus is risen from the dead lo in the grave he, he lay jesus our savior he broke the bars away jesus our lord up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph o'er his foes he arose the victor from the dark domain and he lives forever 
With his sins to reign, he arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose this morning. Today we are here to tell you that the one who has the power to give you that great change is the one who is alive forevermore, will never suffer again, will never die again. Once in the end of the age, he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. The passage of the Lord Jesus Christ. The passage of Jesus Christ was fundamental. It was essential. If Zacchaeus is to know that change, Jesus must enter Jericho and friends in order for us to have that great change it was fundamental for Jesus Christ to come essential if he had not come we would have been like all men most miserable we would have died and gone to a lost eternity but thank God this morning that Jesus came into this world and the Bible says his name shall be called Jesus for he shall save his people from their sin. The passage of Jesus was fundamental. The passage of Jesus was fitting. It was appropriate. It was right. It was proper. It was right and appropriate for Jesus to enter Jericho. And it was absolutely right. It was absolutely proper and appropriate for Jesus Christ to come into this world. Had he not come we would have died and gone to hell but we thank god this morning that jesus came he died an atoning death for us so the passage of christ was fundamental the passage of christ was fitting the passage of christ was fruitful producing good results it produced good results in the heart of zacchaeus zacchaeus was saved because of Jesus Christ who came into Jericho. Dear friends, Jesus Christ has come. His passage is fundamental. His passage is fitting. His passage is fruitful. And it can be fruitful in your life. If from your heart you repent of your sin and trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. But notice the Lord's proclamation in verse 5. The word of God tells us Jesus Christ came to the place. And Jesus Christ did not only come to the place, but the word of God says he looked up and he said to him, Zacchaeus made haste and come down. The proclamation of Jesus, the declaration of Jesus, the announcement of Jesus, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. His proclamation was direct. It was directed. It was aimed at Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus, the Bible tells us, made haste came down and received him joyfully. That's Zacchaeus' penitence. Friends, what are you going to do this morning? Having heard of this wonderful person, having heard of the condition in which you are, having heard that Jesus paid it all, having heard the proclamation of the gospel again this day, are you going to come down and receive him joyfully? Or are you going to continue in your sin? Our hearts desire and pray to God is that from your heart, you're going to receive him as your savior and be saved before it is forever too late. We are going to close this broadcast with a word of prayer. And as we bow our hearts and bow our heads, you can bow your heads, bow your hearts wherever you are, and receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Shall we pray? Our God and Father, we come to thee at the close of another broadcast, Moments with Truth. Father, we worship thee and we thank thee for the great change that took place in Zacchaeus' life. We thank thee for the great change that thou hast wrought in the hearts and lives of so many in this great nation and throughout the world. But Father, there are many who have not experienced this great change. We pray today that as they have listened to this tremendous proclamation, that they will come to the Savior just as they are and receive him and be saved before it is forever too late. Bless thy word as we give thee our thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for viewing today's broadcast, Moments with Truth. We want to invite you to call us at 796-0979 or 283-2222. Or you can email us at afrob64 at gmail.com. If you look on the screen, you will see our various locations. 
and the times of our services. Be free to attend. A welcome awaits you at all times. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Sweetly echo the gospel call, wonderful words of life. Offer pardon and peace to all, wonderful words of life. Holy Savior, sanctified forever, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of love, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of love.